वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई प्रीति पटेल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ आई एस एफ कॉलेज ऑफ फार्मेसी मोगा वेलकम यू ऑल इन डायलॉग सीरीज अंडर द एजीज ऑफ आई क्यू ए सी एंड आई आई सी आई एस एफ सी पी डॉक्टर अंकित जैन इज द एक्सपर्ट ऑफ द डे डॉक्टर अंकित जैन कंप्लीटेड हिज ग्रेजुएसन पी जी एंड पी एच डी फ्रॉम डॉक्टर हरी सिंह और सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी सागर एंड ही ज्वाइन आई आई एस सी बेंगलोर as a research associate after completion of work he went to texas uh, a and m school of pharmacy usa for their post doctoral degree dr ankit jain have many national and international publications and a vast experience on drug delivery formulation development and especially on ndds so before starting the lecture i request to our director sir to enlighten the program please sir good morning so good morning dr ankit ji good morning everyone first of all on behalf of isf college of pharmacy i welcome dr ankit jain today's expert very very dynamic and uh, leading person in the pharmacy profession from bottom of my heart i also welcome coordinator dr uh, preeti patel and all the audience those who are connect with the youtube channel so this is the isf dialog series the purpose behind of this dialog series to connect the peoples from the india as well as abroad in the different different field including uh, research center or academia as well as the industry so that the young uh, budding or you can say scientist students faculty members come to know what types of the work is the going on second thing is very very important let us consider on the basis of this lecture number of people they come to know connection with the dr ankit jain and they will take the benefit how to move the state how to take the job opportunity how to connect from different different people so that as per their interest they can be connect they can take the help of their senior they can take help of their senior with the research so all these parameter we have considered so without taking time i again thankful to dr ankit jain for provide your precious time and uh, you have given the opportunity to the indian scientist as well as the abroad because this is the open to all and you are welcome always at isf college of pharmacy so this is the initial step by the isf college of pharmacy i want to establish one of the platform common to all peoples those are want to work at a different different place in the india what they want to establish something in a pharmaceutical field so all the researchers they are the welcome at a one platform not only for the dialog series they can also establish some of the labs for useful for the industry and society so thank you very much and again welcome to dr ankit jain over to dr preeti thank you sir for nice words dr ankit going to deliver lecture on liposomes a career of choice for targeting delivery so i request to dr ankit please proceed please sir thank you very much dr preeti for a uh, very nice introduction and a very nice words from uh, uh, professor dr gd gupta sir i would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to chairman sri pravin gar director and principal professor gd gupta sir vice principal r k narang for inviting me to give an expert talk under the aegis of IQAC ISF College of Pharmacy Moga uh today i will be presenting a very interesting topic uh, it is based on liposomes so let me share the screen is it visible no ankit it is not visible just uh, i think enter window or chrome mm -hmm. this screen is actually available let me check is it window i think 
डॉक्टर प्रीति मैडम फर्स्ट क्लोज इट यस सर या या आई गॉट इट आई विल शेयर डोंट वरी सर वन मिनट वन मिनट यस आई थिंक इज इट विजिबल नाउ यस 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 आह सो टुडे टॉपिक इज लाइपोजोम्स कैरियर ऑफ चॉइस फॉर टारगेटेड डिलीवरी एज वी नो लाइपोजोम्स इज अ वर्सेटाइल कैरियर इट इज अ वन ऑफ द ओल्डेस्ट कैरियर विच वॉज अप्रूव बाय द एफ डी ए एंड इफ वी कंसिडर सो द फर्स्ट प्रोडक्ट वॉज द डॉक्सिल इफ वी रिमेंबर इट वॉज द लिपोजोम सिस्टम्स विच वॉज प्रोड्यूस फॉर द एंटी कैंसर ड्रग डॉक्सिलोब्यूसिन so it was the first fda approved product that was a nano carrier so it changed the whole life of the cancer patients and it is still working so i would like to introduce this topic it is very interesting and we have also see uh, uh, we have also seen so many products which are based on liposomal even the lipid based systems moderna vaccine or pfizer so we have seen so many products which are based on lipids so let us see what are the recent advances which are uh, particularly focused on the targeted carrier systems so let us see what are the major problems currently associated with the conventional drug delivery for systemic drug administration we know there's uncontrolled biodistribution of pharmaceuticals throughout the body this is the first problem which we face with the uh, administration of uh, nano carriers or the conventional carriers other one is lack of drug carrier specific affinity towards a pathological side as we know we have to uh, we need to try to have a more accumulation of drug at a specific site of action or see the pathological side where the disease is actually occurring within the body next is it is necessity of a uh, to have a large total dose of a drug you know we cannot administer a large dose otherwise it will be toxic and it is inconvenient to the patient for administration as well apart from this we face non specific toxicity it is because of uh, you know the carrier system is, starts binding to different parts of the body because it is not specific in binding to the specific tissue or the part of the body so it leads to so many adverse side effects so what do we need we need actually drug targeting drug targeting is the solution of all these problems so let us understand how do we you know how can we differentiate the conventional drug delivery and targeted drug delivery we can see there are two mice see uh, both have tumor so if when we administer conventional drug delivery system what happens it distributes throughout the body what what happens in case of uh, targeted carrier systems let me turn on the pointer so that i can highlight yeah so in case of targeted drug delivery system we can see when the delivery system is administered through intended route route of administration it reaches maximally to the target site here in the case it is tumor so this is the basic difference through which we can understand what is targeted drug delivery let us look back to the background of you know targeting we can uh, we have uh, you know heard about the mesebullet concept which was questioned by the paul elish in 1900 so what are the drugs would be targeted by virtue of groups having fn2 specific cells but these are the drugs are not specific drugs are not specific but they can interact with the specific cells so how to actually intend the drugs to reach to a specific site within the body within the cell next part is a ligand would confer specificity on a specific reagent so there will be two parts he proposed first is drug and there is ligand ligand is nothing but it is a pioneering moiety which can guide the drug to a specific site of the body so based on this conception which was given by mesic uh, mesic bullet concept given by the paul elish in 1900 so two components were proposed first one recognizes and binds the target that is that we call the ligand second one provides A therapeutic action at the target site that is the drug but is it sufficient later on it was you know when it was experimented on animals and uh, trialed with uh, human beings say the clinical trials so it was found that it is not working properly because of uh, you know opsonization other toxicity parameters 
So currently, the concept of magic bullet includes a coordinated behavior of three components. First is drug, second is targeting moiety, and third one is pharmaceutical carrier, the field in which we are working widely. So let us see what does targeted drug delivery mean? What we are actually trying to do? Are we playing with the body? Are we playing with the drug? Or what is happening? So it is a method of delivering drug preferentially. Preferentially, it doesn't. It means we are trying to accumulate the drug to the target site maximally. There is nothing perfect concept, nothing ideal. So we are trying to, uh, you know, target the right place, try to uh, deliver the drug at the right time with the right dose, of course, for the right period of time. So these three, four parameters are very crucial to make a delivery system targeted to a specific site of the body. Coming to the next characteristics. So what are the ideal drug carrier characteristics if we, are, if we want to design a carrier system? It must be able to cross the anatomical barriers. It depends on the route of administration, whether we are using uh, topical or say the intravenous, so it depends. Next is, it must be recognized selectively by the target cells. It should ha have some affinity to the target cells. Next is, what we need to have, it should be specific. Uh, it should have some specificity to bind with the ligand so that it can be modified. So what do we do? We tether the ligands, which should be stable enough in plasma. Otherwise, it will not reach to the target site. It should be stable in interstitial or other biofluids. The ligand or the carrier system, both, should be non-toxic, non-immunogenic, and biodegradable. It is very crucial parameter. Most of the carrier systems, which are synthetic, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, polymers have been produced synthetically in the lab, but these are not biodegradable, so we cannot play with the body. Next is, after recognition, what will happen with the carrier system? It will interlace, and the carrier system should release the drug. If we make a bonding of drug with the carrier system, or if it is embedded within the system, if it is not releasing at the target site, what will happen? The uh, biological, you know, manifestations will be like that. Pharmacological effects will not elicit from the carrier system as well as the drug. Let us see what are the widely explored nanocarriers. There are a number of nanocarriers, but still liposomes is at the first place. These carriers may be virus-like. We have seen micellar systems. We, we have seen the carbon nanotubes, which may be in different shapes or say the um, multi-wall, single wall. We, uh, we have seen nanosphere, uh, nanospheres, polymeric systems. Dendemic systems are also uh, widely explored, but this was a lot of toxicity issues. Other than this, peptidic systems, small molecules uh, have been delivered through peptidic systems. Uh, nowadays, nanocrystals, metallic nanoparticles, silica nanoparticles, carbon based systems, which are hybrid, fluorescence, or other systems have al already been explored. But the toxicity issue is, is still the major concern with all these carriers. Apart from that, we have seen nanocapsules to, you know, regulate the release, particularly. They, we have, uh, we know, there are two kinds of uh, relief system we can design, which may be reservoir type or matrix type. So depending upon the need, we design the, our carrier system. So what could be the possible drug targets? There are four major drug targets. First is receptors. They may be agonist or antagonist. Uh, other is ion channels. Third one is enzymes. And fourth is transporters. In case of targeting, actually, whenever we do targeting, it should have some preferential accumulation. So receptors is widely targeted uh, site. How to target? What could be the targeting moieties that we call ligands? So carriers can be functionalized with one or more targeting moieties. These ligands can be antibodies. These are very specific, but you know the scale up or the formulation is very critical. Uh, even the cost will be the major problem to the patients. Others are lactins, other proteins. Uh, we can use the lipoproteins as a ligands. There are so many hormones 
actually hormones can also be hormone therapy we have uh, seen uh, it is useful in some sort of diseases charged molecules charged molecules we know the cationic molecules uh, we have explored as a uh, you know cationic peptides cpp or other sort of so that uh, those things can be used as a ligand to uh, reach to the site but these are still not specific if we consider because these are cationic so they will bind to the site but we can mask it and we can unmask it so there are number of strategies other than this polysaccharides or low molecular weight ligands low molecular weight ligand say the folic acid is a classical example in case of polysaccharides we have seen ha hyaluronic acid okay so let us understand what are the four levels of drug targeting first level is organ compartmentalization it means we are targeting the organ let us say it is uh, for say example it is uh, liver second level is cellular targeting now we are just you know going within the uh, organ so we are we have reached to a higher level so we are uh, actually targeting the specific cells within the organ these are tumor cells third level is organ alert now we are again you know advancing the targeting within the cell so it is subcellular targeting we also call so we are targeting here in case of mitochondria now we are, i have seen so many you know researches so they report uh, advanced targeting so it is fourth level it is molecular targeting now we are targeting something within the organelle so selectively we are targeting a molecular site it is f1 subunit of mitochondria so targeting level has reached to a you know unexpected level but the problem is higher the level of targeting it brings the more safe and more efficacious drug delivery however it becomes more complicated because we have to design the carrier system which will be complex and it will be difficult to scale up what would a possible ligand or uh, say if we, we are considering the ligands it means to which cell these are specific we are considering parenchymal liver cells so the specific cell specific ligands these can be lactose uh, sorry galactose polymeric ig antibodies cholesterol acetyl vldl or ldl in case of kafar cells we can use uh, mannose fucose galactose ldl oxidized as a ligand if you want to target the liver endothelial cells in that case we can use the mannose acetylated ldl if you want to target the leukocytes we can use the chemotactic peptide or complement c3b so depending upon the need or the disease condition or the requirement or the route of administration dose or dose and regimen we have to inculcate so many parameters on a single page and we have to design our carrier system now moving to the main topic that uh, i am interested to you know uh, discuss with you all this is liposomes it is one of the favorite topic of mine it is a model nano carrier see how it is actually produced in the laboratory as well as uh, in the industries so we generally produce you know the thin stacks of dry lipid film and these films are dried uh, using rota vapor up some sort of other instruments there are so many processes so these films are hydrated uh, to we can see how when we hydrate these cells the pinching of process occurs pinching of means the lipid layers are actually you know start bulging out and the aqueous media penetrates within the cells uh, within the layers so those layers starts you know swelling so in simple terms it is a swelling of lipids next is we try to you know have a, some self assembling bodies so these are assembled when we agitated or perturbed so initially mlvs mlvs are nothing but the multi centric uh, lamellar vesicles so there will be you know so many uh, layers within which concentric layers within which the aqueous media will be entrapped if we want to have a smaller size then we can go for extrusion or sonication so we can get the luvs or suvs let us see what what is the orientation of these lipids as we consider uh, the structural parts so lipids are nothing but these have tails or hats so depending upon the size or their orientation uh, they 
take the shape in uh, media when we disperse it. So if we consider initial, the shape is inverted when the critical packing parameter, P stands for the critical packing parameter, when it uh, ranges in between 1 by 3 to 2 by 3. So it takes the inverted cone and phase will be isotropic or hexagonal. So it, it is the orientation of the uh, you know lipid, uh, those lipids, they take a shape and make a sort of uh, uh, structure. If we take the another shape, we can make the lambda. So packing uh, parameter will be one. And third one is cylindrical. So it will be again lambda, but uh, the shape will be cubic. Next one is truncated concept. Or uh, you may be thinking how these shapes are actually you know occurring. It depends on the lipids that we are using. The alkyl chain changes, the, these may be branched, these may have some sort of bonds, double, double bond or triple bonds. So depending on the uh, orientation of uh, structure of that lipid, uh, they start orienting themselves. So the shape changes. The phase will be hexagonal second or reverse micelles. So it is very critical to decide which lipids we have to select to make a carrier system. Otherwise, we cannot get the carrier system which will, uh, which will, uh, which was actually desired initially. The C section is actually uh, giving C and D. Both are important. It is giving how the drug can be loaded. It, it is representing the active loading of drug because generally we, you know, uh, mix the drug in echos media or mix the drug uh, in the ornic phase. But when the drug is amphiphilic, it is not going to, you know, going, uh, going into the liposomal systems. So we can employ the active loading. So this is the presentation, how ammonium salt or in case of uh, calcium salt, depending upon the nature of drug, drug is anionic or drug is cationic. So we can use these two methods, calcium based method or ammonium sulfate based method to entrap or to have a high loading of uh, say the drug, particularly if we consider the doxorubicin. So a doxorubicin is actively loaded. We use the ammonium sulfate salt in that case. I'm not going to explore it uh, in detail because uh, I'm uh, trying to focus on the targeting part. Next is if you want to, you know, make all these carriers. Nowadays, it is very crucial. We cannot just keep on, you know, using the variables or say the factors at a laboratory level, which cannot be scaled up at industrial level. So industry demands some sort of computerized softwares, which can be a uh, help in precise and accurate production, reproduction of the batches. So there are, there are a number of designs. So uh, if we consider factorial designs, these all are uh, basically factorial designs based on, uh, uh, say, the mathematical models. Those may be linear, cubic, or uh, quadrilateral. So it depends how we are you know, putting our parameters into that software. And we optimize it to have a reproducibility of data in a very narrow range. So these are a couple of designs, which I, I have already showed here. These are factorial designs. It may be FFD fraction factorial or central composite, box banken, orthogonal design, or optimal design, or Taguchi design, or simplex mixture design, artificial neural network. The question is which design is suitable? Of course, it depends on the how many parameters we are taking, what are the variables, dependent, independent variables. So process parameters, product parameters, we have to consider so many things. I have, uh, uh, I'm showing, you know, the wagon wheel. What could be the variables, formulation variables and process variables? If we look at the process variables, so these can be rate of filtration, hydration parameters. We have to, you know, uh, manage rotation. We have to manage the sonication, what time, uh, how long we are sonicating, at what frequency. Uh, and it also depends what kind of system we want to make. It may be thermosensitive, it may be pH sensitive. Depending upon the condition, we have to manage the process conditions. Otherwise, we will lose our carrier system. We will not get the final product. These systems can be pegylated. They can be made targeted. Targeting needs some sort of anchoring with a specific pine ring moiety that we call ligand. Let us move to the next section. How? How all these, you know, QBD? Quality by design, uh, workflow goes. 
so it is very critical and uh, sometime you know we get the phobia with all these variables but uh, it is not a big task or big deal if we understand what are the variables how these are interconnected so initially we have so many variables then we need to identify them select them in a specific manner then we make a, a relation correlation between them and then we try to hit our you know goal size goal size means what are our desired goals so it is a fish uh, fishbone diagram which is showing how we can get highest encapsulation efficiency with minimal size and stable formulation cqa is nothing but the critical quality attributes so there are so many things say instrumentation reliability we have to consider how we are using the instrument are these you know calibrated are we using the proper instruments which are suitable to make a system sustainable or the precise results will come out other parameters may be analytical method or the formulation parameters if we consider we want to have a specific size sometimes we cannot go less than 1000 nanometer otherwise it will be it will be you know expelled out of the body through kidney excretion so we have to regulate the size as well surface charge is crucial if we take the cationic material it will be toxic but still we we can take the cationic with valencing with uh, some peptides polymers we can mask the charge there are so many things with the targeting we have to consider the lipid concentration if we are giving something anything if we you know dump into the body it may be water as well it become toxic so targeting is a way to figure out what are our needs are we really able to design and establish those needs or converting those needs into our uh, envisaged uh, goals so there are so many techniques nowadays we are very advanced in computerization so we can consider quality by design we can consider some sort of docking uh, we have so many uh, you know uh, chemistry tools so if we all together consider all these things we can uh, come up with a target carrier liposomal systems we have seen in covid time very in a very short period we have seen a, a fast approval how it could come it is because of the technology so let us move to the uh, next section because uh, you know it is very complicated uh, if i start explaining it will take again one more hour what are the modifiable capabilities in liposomes let us consider it can be you know pegylated pegylated is intended pegylation is in, intended for stealing the charge or make it long circulatory or we can increase the blood span time of that carrier system or the drug if we are directly you know pegylating the drug so we can also tether we can also anchor something to the pg so that it will have you know multiple effects it will be having long circulatory nature as well as it will lead to the target site uh, in a desired concentration but nowadays we are facing the problem with pg as well we have seen you know the immunization uh, antibody generation uh, it is very specific term that we call accelerated blood clearance it happens with the liposomal systems on repeated dosing so if we want to avoid this uh, we can you know use some sort of detachable uh, or depegylation concept so we can make some sort of bonds between the ligand and pg so it will be long circulatory but when it reaches to a specific site of the body where the carrier system is desired to reach so the pg chains will removed in within the cell not outside the cell so there are ways uh, we can make it some sort of stimuli sensor that is the next section so uh, we can make it transitional changes so that in response to a specific stimuli it may be internal it, it may be you know executed from the outside if we consider the internal the ph is you know the acidic within the cells so we can uh, use some sort of ph sensor carrier uh, liposomal system uh, sometimes temperature is also high at a pathological site because of uh, we know the hypothermia occurs at the pathological site and redox potential gsh base system or say the other modalities we can uh, employ which have some redox sensitivity so system will be you know sensitive to these stimuli and what will happen it will give a new feature to the system and the pg will be removed or the system will try to 
uh, next step that we call the endosomal escape. So endosomal sequestration is the end the ratio. So I will try to explain uh, in other slides. Ah, this is the presentation, uh, you know, how these stimuli sensitive system works. So whenever we administer these systems, these systems should be physiologically stable. But when they get some sort of stimuli, they should start, you know, executing their feature. It may be some sort of pH, temperature, external ultrasound. It depends how we, we have designed it. So based on the stimuli response, you know, responsiveness, the system, it starts destabilizing uh, at the at a specific time. It, it may be extracellular, it may be intracellular. So the system will the entrap drug, it will immediately released, leading to uh, you know the pharmacological actions thereby. This is the schematic presentation, how the targeting actually occurs. When we tether a ligand to a carrier system, say the liposomal system, it will be endocytosized if it is receptor mediated endocytosis. So it will be guided to an endosomal cascade. So early in an early endosome, the acidic pH starts, you know, getting lower and lower. So in the late endosome, the carrier system will be digested by the, you know, asterases, hydrolases or other. So this is the major hurdle with the target carrier systems. So we need to have some sort of modification in the carrier system so that it can bypass the endosomes. So the maximal drug will be released in the cytosol and it will be guided to the desired site. Here in the case, it is leading to the nucleus or if we you know, target it to uh, some sort of mitochondria. So it depends the uh, action of the drug, whether it is specific to the nuclei or to the DNA or it's specific to the mitochondria. Based on the pharmacological actions, uh, we will have a high efficacy of the system. And leading to the apoptosis. So in case if we consider the cancer cells, the cells will start dying if we make a target carrier system. So let us see uh, what are the most common stimuli response to liposomes. Uh, you may be thinking, uh, I started with the targeting uh, then why I have moved to the stimuli response of liposomal systems? Because, you know, the targeting is not sufficient. Targeting, uh, people think uh, targeting means we are just anchoring the leak into the carrier. It, it is not going to work at all. We need to, uh, you know, we need to deliver the drug maximally to the target. Target may be intracellular or subcellular level. So, uh, you know, we need uh, to destabilize the system when it reaches the endosome. So endosome will be destabilized. The maxim maximal drug will release uh, into the cytosol and the drug. Let's see what are the different types of liposomes. It may be enzyme responsive. So if we consider the enzymes, the protease, amidase, or esterase enzymes. So based on the bonds, so amide bonds can be broken by the proteases or say the amidases. So uh, it depends how the bondage we, con we are considering. So based on the amides or ester hydrolysis by protease or esterase. So it is the reported example, the oxyplatin or vinrobin or dyscoria. It has been delivered through this approach. The systems can be made pH sensitive based on the pH responsiveness. So in case uh, of pH responsive liposomal systems, we use phosphatidyl derivatives such as DOPE or say the other, uh, say the pH sensitive lipids. Dope is, uh, is not used alone. It is used with uh, CAMPS. It is not written here. Polystyl hemisuccinate. Other lipids is, uh, you know, it depends on the sensitivity or it depends on the packing of the lipids. Sometimes these are branched. So through this pH sensitive liposomes, we can deliver curcumin, paclitaxel, DNA plasmid. You may be thinking how DNA plasmid can be uh, delivered. DNA plasmid is nothing but the nucleic acid. So again, it needs, uh, it is in a anionic. We need some sort of cationic lipid to bind. So depending upon the need, we select the lipids. So basically, uh, in any liposomes, cholesterol is the most common component. Other are the phospholipids. 
So we play with the phospholipids. And other than phospholipids, if we want to pegylate, because we need to have a steel or long circulatory carrier system, liposomal system, we pegylate it. If we want to have a lesser complications, say opsonization as well, we pegylate it. And if we want to have a you know specificity, then again we tether the ligand to the carrier system. Next is redox sensor. As we know, number of reactor oxygen species are present within the cell. So we can employ peroxides, hydroxyl radicals, singlet oxygen. So it depends on the redox potential difference. As we know, the redox potential is quite high within the cell as compared to the outside. Intracellular, out, uh, extracellular, redox potential is completely different. So we can exploit this uh, anomalous feature. So it has been used for doxorubicin. Other than this, we can use thermosensitive liposomes. So, you know, thermosensitivity is nothing but the increasing the temperature, giving the temperature to the liposomes so that the transition of, uh, you know, the lipid phase will occur. So usually we employ 40 to 45 degree and it is tolerable. It is not a big deal. So uh, we can use some sort of uh, radio frequency, microwave or focused ultrasound ablation therapy. So using this uh, approach, uh, you know, doxorubicin has been delivered. Other than this, there are other techniques, light sense to ultrasound sense to or magnetic liposomes. So based on, you know, the stimuli, how we are employing the stimuli, are we really, uh, you know, targeting to a specific site of the body? External stimuli are a little complicated. Because when we make it externally activated, sometimes it is difficult for the patient because it needs a specific skill set. When we make it intracellular or something, uh, a stimuli which is, from, which is already existing within the cell, see the pH change or redox change. So it becomes by virtue of the pathological side. So external stimuli is a little complicated. So uh, sometimes it is avoided, but you know, we do not know when the techniques are advancing, we can still employ. And uh, so many countries I have seen Americans, uh, Chinese, Japanese, uh, even the South Koreans, they are doing very well in externally stimuli sensitive liposomal systems. Moving to the next topic, uh, say, uh, how many clinically uh, liposomes have been uh, explored? I have already told doxyl is the mildest stone. It has nothing but the doxorubicin. It has been indicated for uh, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, Kaposi sarcoma. Apart from that, donoxone, it, uh, it has donorubicin. It has been indicated for AIDS related Kaposi sarcoma. Other is MEPACT. It has Mephamotide. It is used or indicated for high grade resectable, retractable, non metastatic osteosarcoma. It is very specific. Sometimes, you know, when the conditions are non manageable, these are not, uh, this, uh, as we consider for the any therapy, we generally go for the primary, first line of therapy. If it is not working, when we, then we move to the higher, second level, third level. Uh, when it becomes difficult to manage, then we uh, try to have a targeted carrier system because target systems are more efficacious and safest. But the problem is these are not cheap. These are not affordable at all. That's why we are working on that area. We are trying to have something which may be affordable to common people. So we, we are actually working on that area with the lipids which are uh, cost effective which are biodegradable, which are uh, biomimetic, particularly which are matching with the biological membranes so that liposomes places at the first position. If we consider FDA approval, 90% products are approved by the FDA, which are liposome. Moving to the next, it is Morcubo. It has been Christine. So it is indicated for acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Other is Vioxx, uh, next is Reposite, Next is Ripusu. So there are so many systems. Even for Paclet Excel, uh, we have seen the Abraxin, polymeric system. Uh, if we consider the uh, Abraxin and if we consider Lipusu, both works fine parallelly. 
so uh, if we consider liposomal systems these are more acceptable as compared to other carrier systems so i would like to have you know couple of take home messages so that whenever students will be or the readers will be going through the slides what they will consider out of this uh, presentation so we need we need to try to improve the existing conventional approaches as we know the drug can be delivered in different ways but what what do we need to improve so we need to improve the existing conventional approaches to overcome let me say non selective uptake as you know each carrier has its own advantages and disadvantages so choose a suitable one some we can make nanoparticle we can make uh, liposomes we can make anything sometimes we think uh, yeah what is drug delivery it is just a, you know taking the drug and uh, encapsulating the drug into a carrier system it is not as simple as we say because when it is administered or it is translated from in vitro to ex vivo ex vivo to uh, say the animal model we, we we will see the drastic change because body you know pharmacokinetics form dynamics both play parallelly and the behavior of you know the body the responses of the body are very critical we cannot manage uh, outside everything we cannot simulate everything i mean so we need to uh, exploit more than one approach i would say a combination of approaches like gene delivery or controlled gene expression of enzymes and a carrier proteins can be promising strategy sometimes we use a gene uh, coupled with a drug sometimes we use some sort of nanotheranostic technique so that we can monitor where the drug is reaching so it depends how we are designing our liposomal system we can have better understanding of pathophysiology of disease if we know the anomalous feature if we know the something which is different at, at the pathological side as compared to the normal side of the body then we can think of how to design do we exploit the enzyme can we exploit some sort of other anomalous feature ph temperature it depends so what is anomalous to the normal cells based on that concept we can uh, you know design our strategy nowadays we have seen whenever we make any carrier system it may be liposomal it may be other carrier system we have seen a lot of leakage of a drug during biodistribution even in in vitro studies we see 30% drug 40% drug released before reaching the target site and it is not stable so these are the major challenges and uh, there may be cases of resistance and long term therapy when we keep on you know giving the multiple doses and if we consider the targeting if the target is within the cell or see the subcellular label endosomal sequestration is the major issue with the drug and the gene 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 is just you know nucleic acid rna dna whatever so it is just digested by the nucleases extracellular as well as intracellular so hardly 10 10% if we consider hardly 10% even in in vitro studies hardly 10% effect is uh, actually achieved so we are actually working on that how we can you know make it uh, some sort of mask the carrier system in such a way design a carrier system in such a way so that we can overcome all these problems reticular endothelial system it is, is it is the major site where the you know unknown specific uptake happens with the carrier system so most of the carrier systems are uptaken by the rea system and hardly a uh, very uh, less concentration see the 10 to 20% drug or so the carrier system reaches to the other sites apart from res we may have some unfavorable pathological conditions see something as we say something uh, cells when it starts dying or the site is sometimes disease is very adaptive it you know starts creating some sort of resistance to have penetration of carrier system so we have to consider all these things sometime it is you know uh, fibrosis sometime uh, it is very you know reluctant to take any drug any carrier system so how do we play with that you know uh, very uh, strange behavior of uh, pathological site so there are some these are all stumbling blocks to achieve uh, safe and efficacious drug and gene delivery apart from that there is also a need to produce cost effective because when we you know go to high level of targeting 
we need to have uh, you know costly materials and uh, it becomes uh, complex uh, it again poses the problem of scale up uh, of course we cannot make all these carrier system when we whatever we are making at the lab at industrial level because uh, when whenever we are we are using very small setup and industry uh, wants to make a batch a lot so uh, we have to consider all these things because uh, you know we, we uh, play with very uh, few parameters or industry wants short steps less parameters and we, we play with a lot of parameters so, so there are so many challenges uh, apart from this there are regulatory challenges we cannot use the materials which are not safe say the grass listed so uh, there are so many aspects in case of targeting of liposomal systems i hope you enjoy all these things uh, thank you very much thank you so much dr ankit it was wonderful talk about the delivery system and you gave meaningful insights about the liposomes as mo as model carrier about common stimuli responsive lip lipo liposomes ideal characteristics of ligand drug targeting etc so i invite our director sir for some of the session please sir so thank you very much dr ankit ji and uh, very truly i want to mention over some three four points first point is very very important i have uh, listened number of the talk and uh, even today we have completed more than 90 of the isf dialogue series talk what one of the best and the wonderful and uh, you can say excellent representativity so first thing you have considered you each and everything in a simple manner each slide is the self-explanatory what you have using the diagram and their representativity using the technology also uh, let us consider one of the fishbone diagram. This is the one of the excellent. I have go through it. I am checking like that. You have given one slide. This is the QVD model. How to select so all at a time you have given in the side on the basis of the system. Uh, consider accordingly. So each and everything you have given one of the schematic diagram. In this you have used some of the technology. How the drug it can be act. And... Uh, initially as the second of the slide you have given what is the example of the target with the using one of the red so this simplicity presentability voice modulation voice control dialogues each and everything in a very very nice manner and a layman can be easily understand what is the liposomal delivery system how you can target with the any uh, you can say like this one of the slide you have also given they are the where is the targeting you can say you have given the four point over there so these yes. things you have one of the small time each and everything you give in the in a compact format and in the last slide i have come to know that one person with the one bulb enlightening the hour and there is the lot of question so if any person want to know that everywhere and somewhere is the light only need to the connectivity this is the slide not only <laughs> simple because light have the it's only like, one like and question have the all place <laughs> this is up to you how you can search it so this <laughs> is the one of I placed it. and uh, you have given on the intentionally so this is the obviously good one person given the example in a big room there is the thousands of the artificial flower thousand of the artificial flower and question asked that and there is the one only the natural flowers and the question was there you can select one of the flower number of the person try what they are unable to search it then how to search it so one of the person come over there and he left only one of the honeybee honeybee reads very easily on the surface yes, so this yes. types of the things person who yes, want to recognize person who want to know only the person reach up to the target yes otherwise drug will be the move here and there so this is the need today we be are the pitch specific we need to the work in a systematic and yes, zero level work from the start so that you can easily understand 
where you want to the target, where is the obstacle, where is the distribution, and how to manage each and everything. So excellent. Yes. I have listened each and every slide. And uh, thank you, very much. Thank the you. The screenshot I have taken because I am highly impressed. So thank you very much, Dr. Ankit Janji, and thank you to whole team of the IQAC coordinator of the IQAC, Dr. Siddharth Menji over here. And uh, thankful to uh, today's coordinator, Dr. Preeti Patel, and uh, head of the department of the QA, Dr. Valak Dasji, to connect with me. And when I call, receive one call from Dr. Preeti, the, today's the one lecture at 7.30. I want to the just join in the mid, but I am lucky to over there so that I have listened one of the wonderful lecture. Thank you, whole team. Thank you very much, Dr. Ankit Janji. And my good wishes to you and your family. You can grow, you can develop. And not only this is the paper or you can say like that, you can design some of the technology. And I hope that in the coming days, you can also transfer to the industry to do three technology in this format. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ankit. Thank you, Dr. Ankit. Thank you. 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 Thank you.